Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and welcome to this second video featuring my brand new winter foliage mold. In this second video, I'm going to show you how to make conifer and also the conifer berries. And then we'll be moving on to the bay laurel, which is where bay leaves and things come from, and also the laurel bay um, berries. So let's get started. So in this second video, I'm going to show you how we make the conifer. So conifer is also, uh, you can use this for cedar and also cypress as well. So this is a very attractive leaf. And then there, there are four cavities. There's a small, a medium, and a large, and an extra large. And this is actually uh, what they will make in, um, so here you can see. So this could be used for all different types of leaves. Like when you're doing, uh, for example, the uh, chamomile, uh, chamomile flower, which is a little tiny daisy family, has a leaf. You could use this for chamomile leaves, but also you could use this for many different other types of leaves as well. This also could be used for coral. So if you're doing like an under the sea type of cake, you could use this as coral, uh, but we're gonna do the conifer. So of course, as with the other components of this mold, this could be made unwired. Um, so this would look really, really nice, you know, like for example, gain on cookies, you know, you could use a couple of pieces of the conifer and you could use the little large large cone or my small size pine cone, but also for uh, cupcakes, but also in craft for on cards, because this is great uh, when you're doing, for example, with air drying clay on cards, because you could use this as a little filler. Um, and this could pretty much be used, you know, a lot of floral designers use conifer throughout the whole year. So this is again, something we think about often winter time arrangement, but also you could use this at any time of year. So a very, very good filler uh, for a sugar flower arrangement or for a Z and air drying clay project. So when we make this, we're going to um, use the four cavities. So we're going to use the te same technique we did in video one. So if you haven't watched video one, probably suggest you check that out because I go into a lot of detail about all of the various components on the mold. Anyway, so we're just gonna put a little bit of uh, vegetable shortening fat into the cavities here. Now these are made in a very, very similar way, especially the smallest leaves for the uh, way I make my fern. So when I use my Flower Pro Fern mold, it's quite similar. All right, and then the other thing is we're actually going to use the fern back veiner. So we're actually gonna use this back veiner to vein the back of our conifer leaves if you're gonna do them wired, right? If you're using them flat, say on a card or craft project, you don't have to do that. But anyway, so we're gonna use the same sort of similar technique. Now we're gonna measure off paste. Now paste I have here is a foliage green. This is a slightly sort of yellowy green color. And in the directions in book four, in the front of book four, there are formulas for sugar, but also for air drying clay. Um, so if you actually use your measuring mold with the air drying clay, you'd make the lime green formula, which is a number one of white, number three, uh, four of green, number four of yellow. And then you also would add a number three of orange. So you'd add some orange to this. And that would actually give you an a direct match to the sugar version, all right? So as I said, so the formulas, so check out those formulas in the beginning of book number four. And we're gonna measure off the paste. A little peas here. And uh, so we're gonna measure off the paste. Now, of course, I'm just gonna show you one of each, but you can, of course, make multiples of these. As you can see, I've got, you know, all of this, the three, the, uh, three different sizes here, or four different sizes, including the extra large size one. And of course, the, you can use these individually or in a component in a spray like I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna measure off number four, small, five, small, six, small, and seven, small. So what that means is your number four, your number five, your number six, and number seven will go through the hole. All right, and we're just gonna keep those underneath a little cup. So we've put the vegetable shortening fat into the mold. So we're gonna take 28 gauge wires. If you're using green wires here, you could also use white as well. And uh, so we're gonna then, um, so these are gonna go into glue and they're gonna go through the ball of paste. So this is very much like on video number one where I showed making the, uh, when I made the large, uh, bear, uh, the large leaves, like the little needles that use this technique. So we're gonna just dip the glue into, the wire into glue. I'm gonna insert that through the little ball of paste like that. And all I'm gonna do here is gonna make it into a little carrot shape. All right, it's gonna make it into a little carrot shape. And uh, so then we're going to um, press into the mold and work into the fronds using your veining tool. So this is gonna be the little tiny one here. So that's gonna go right at the end there. So you're just gonna place that into the mold there, like so, just gonna press that in. You can use your cosmetic wedge. And then just like I showed using my 
spruce, fir and mold, just going to work that into the little fronds with the veining tool. All right, so it's going to come into, into there like so. Now this is your uh, back veiner of the fern. Now the fern, obviously this veiner is made, so it sort of almost like mimics, so it's made to, to match in with the shape of the fern. And as you can see, like obviously this fern is curved, these ferns are straight. So we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use this obviously in the same sort of way we would do as a lot of the leaf veins. We're just gonna match up that V shape with the wire. So you're just gonna just position the, so you see the wire is gonna sit over where that little V shape is, okay? And so you're just going to position that over where the wire is there. Just going to press that on the top. All right, and that's going to just vein the, the middle part here. Just going to come up. So you need to bring this up to the bottom of the piece because obviously the fern, as you can see, the fern veining starts there. So just bring the V shape. So the V shape is, is going to be, as you can see, the wire is going to go in the middle here. It's going to go up to the top there. Just going to press that on the top here like so. So that's going to give you a veining onto your back of your fern and then your the back of the conifer. You take this out, okay, then all we're going to do is just going to just hollow the base of this around the companion tool and that will give you a little small piece like that, okay. Now you can just go back, I mean, with the, because as you can see, the actual leaf has got a very sort of, sort of not defined veining on there, so it's just more of a textual detail. So then when we move on to the next one, we're going to be using here then the medium size one, which is here. So we're going to then use the, um, so this is going to be for the, so the next one. All right, so again, we're going to put the little bit of glue onto here, gonna insert that through, going to mold this into a cone shape. So the wire is pretty much going right the way to the end there. This is going to go into the, and then the, um, here we're going to put the, in the same sort of way, so just going to press this in, just going to press that in with your cosmetic sponge. And then you're just going to just work that with your finger. And then you can just press this in with your Dresden tool, veining tool. So you see how I'm just working that into the ends of the fern the, uh, I said, the kind of a pieces. So this is just really like how we do when we do the fern, okay? But you're just gonna work that into all of that detail like that. That's gonna fill that into the mold. And then when we do the, um, when we do this, so we're gonna use the small, obviously this small one is gonna be used for that. And then we're going to uh, then we're going to use the same one for the medium, okay? So we're going to use the same size one for the medium. So again, you're just going to just position that so it just sort of sits over the top there, so where the V shape is, and just going to press that on the top, all right? And this is very easy to do. Like if you don't have, um, like for example, if you've got it in the wrong position, you can just re revein that as well. Just going to just press that on the top there like so. So you're going to get that sort of nice, veining into the back of this, okay? So it just sort of matches in with the, and then we're gonna take this and just gonna hollow the base of this around the companion tool. And that will be your, this is gonna give you your uh, medium conifer, okay? So that's gonna give you the medium conifer leaf there. And I'm just drying these in some convoluted crepe foam, all right? So you see how you're gonna just dry these in the convoluted foam. But what it's gonna do is just gonna give you that sort of just that sort of uh, veining on the back there. So it's just gonna help to, as I said, make it look a little bit natural, more natural on the back. Now, when we do the large one, we're going to do exactly the same technique here. Um, so we're gonna, again, just take your paste here. You can just condition that a little bit. And of course, here I'm using uh, sugar, okay? So, um, but uh, as I said, when you're doing the air drying clay, you just would put a little bit of PVA glue on the end of your wire. But this is a nice color because Lilandii, which is a very popular conifer a lot of people use in landscaping, in gardens and things, that is this sort of slightly yellowy green color. Okay, and then this is gonna be the third one. So this is gonna be then this one here. So again, just line that up into the center and you're just gonna sort of work that in with your cosmetic sponge to the detail. So just gonna work this, this up. 
So you're just gonna work that into the areas of the mold and then we're gonna finish this off with your piece there. And if you need to, like if you need a little tiny bit of extra paste or you need to patch it, all right, you can also just take just like a little tiny, most think a little bit like a plaster or a band-aid, you can just put a little tiny bit of extra paste if you need to, just to sort of work your paste uh, up. Now you can also with uh, doing this, you can work this in with your, as I said, with your veining tool into the ends of the little uh, front sections here. So see how I'm just working this in. And if you did have, you shouldn't have too much paste, but you can use the same technique I showed on video number one, where you're taking the little flexi scraper, which you're gonna see me use on the next one, and you can just skim off any excess. So if you are patching, you can use that uh, technique. All right, now then, um, then on the large one, we're gonna use the back veiner of the large. So I use the small for the small and medium, and then this is the large, the large uh, veiner. So we've got small, medium, large, large back veiner. So again, we're just gonna position that. So this is gonna just sort of sit onto there. Just gonna press onto the back there with your fingers. So this is gonna give you the veining. So you're gonna get that sort of veining onto the back there. I'm gonna take that out. It comes out really, really easy with a little bit of release there, the little bit of shortening. I'm just gonna pinch this around the bottom. You see how that's gonna give you your, like your kind of a fronds. So really, really beautiful. And obviously these are so uh, useful to use for all different types of arrangements. They're not just Christmas time or winter time. Um, and then for the large one, then we're gonna use a little bit of a different technique. So for the extra large size ones, we've made small, medium and large. The extra large size one, which is this one here, all right, just due to the, the shape of it, uh, what I actually do is I put the wire in afterwards, but for the first small, medium and large, I put the wire in uh, before. So we're gonna take the paste here. So this is our number, remember this is your number seven small. So for the extra large, we're gonna make the paste into a ball and press into the base of the mold, pressing in with a cosmetic sponge. So again, I'm just gonna condition my paste here and then just gonna just take your just make sure your paste is nicely conditioned. All right, so it's gonna take that into a ball and I'm just gonna just sort of press this into the base of the mold. So I'm just gonna work that down just a little bit with my cosmetic sponge. So I'm gonna come up about halfway up here, like so. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is using my flexi scraper. So then with my flexi scraper, I'm going to work towards the end using flexi scraper at an angle. So when we use the flexi scraper, we sometimes use it like this. But here, what we're actually gonna do is we're going to just use the flexi scraper. So I'm using it at an angle like this, and I'm gonna be quite firm, and I'm slowly working towards the top. And you see how what this is gonna do, it's gonna pull away the excess paste, all right? So you see how we've now have skimmed that off. So now you're going to just press this into the mold, and if you do have to, if you have any little areas that's a little bit thin, you can just put a little patch in here. But as I said, this is a really cool technique to learn, and you can use this. And of course, especially with a soft paste like air drying clay, this is a really uh, very, very easy way to, to do this. All right, so you're just gonna blend, blend that down. And again, just gonna go over the surface of that. Just repress that back in like so. You see, it looks a bit like coral. But I said for um, like chamomile flowers, they're very, very dainty little wild flower, uh, actually an herb and uh, can be used for obviously chamomile tea and things. Um, now, if you're gonna use this leaf on its own, let's say you were making a sugar flower spray or an air drying clay flower spray, and you wanted to use these just the larger, extra large size, you could use a 26 gauge wire. If you're gonna wire them into a spray with the other leaves, I'm gonna use a 28. So there's an option there. Um, if you're gonna use them independent, you can use obviously the 26. So here we're gonna put the glue onto the wire there. So just gonna brush some glue onto my wire. And then we're gonna put this into the leaf here. So just gonna just work this into the base of the leaf and just gonna just work that, just almost like it will go straight up the, the middle there. Just gonna press that wire back into there, like so, okay? Now when we do the veining on this, um, we're going to use the um, firm back veiner. So we're actually gonna use the, the extra large one, all right? So this is the, again, actually this is the extra, extra large, the biggest size fern veiner. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use that middle area because you see this curves to match the fern because when we're making the ferns, 
you can see that that top tip part there, it curves, all right? But you see how the veining looks on the actual fern. Remember, there is a video you can check out on how I made the other, the back of the ferns, how I make the ferns with the back veiner here. But what we're actually gonna do there is we're gonna use the, the sort of the middle area. So we're gonna use this area here, okay? So you just wanna, just almost what I'm doing is from, from where you're looking at it, you're gonna just sort of do that. So this is gonna sort of sit into the middle there like so, and then you're just gonna just press onto the back here like that. So that's gonna give you that nice sort of textural detail. And if you have any little areas where it doesn't sort of, you can just press the veiner on the top of that like that, because you're gonna get that same sort of like natural um, look that the fern has. And you're gonna take that out of the mold, just gonna mold this around the bottom here. Okay and then you're gonna place this into your crepe foam. Now these ones, you're going to sort of put them a little bit more formally in. You're gonna sort of sit it into your, and you're just gonna open these up just a little bit like this. So these will just sort of open up the fronds like that. And that will give you your, your uh, it's gonna be your extra large pieces of conifer. So you'd make as many of those as you need. And remember, of course, also you can do this unwired. And remember, when you do it unwired, there's usually really no reason to use the back veiner. You can do, but there's no reason if you don't, don't see the back of it. Um, but as I said, perfect for cards, for cupcakes, other different applications. So uh, next step is going to be uh, showing you how to make the conifer berries. So before we move on to the conifer berries, just wanted to show you um, there is a video that shows you using the fern back, as I explained in the previous segment. But this is also, this embosser can be used on your sugar paste or your rolled fondant for cookies and for cake boards. And I actually show that on the video. So you see, it really gives a really beautiful technique um, when painted in uh, for craft projects, obviously using inks and things. And then of course on uh, sugar, you can do this on the sugar paste or rolled fondant painted in with some uh, green color and mixed with some vodka. And uh, you get this very nice sort of organic look to your uh, pieces. So that's done with the fur and back uh, veiner. Now we're gonna move on now to the conifer berries. So for the conifer berries, we're gonna use the mold here. Now we're gonna use the triple mold, all right? So this is the, the one and it's actually got like a little tiny star and it. it's the only triple one on there. So a little bit like the holly berry mold for my holly and mistletoe, but this is gonna give you a triple berry and then the top berry there, also you see how it's got like a little five pointed star in there, okay? Um, now in book four, there's going to be a color chart which will show you and it will obviously tell you exactly what everything is if you forget that. But anyway, so it's the one that's got the three little pieces on there. Now we're gonna take, uh, so for the triple berries, we're gonna take three 28 gauge green wires all right, we're gonna tap those level. It's just gonna tap them level. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some quarter width brown floral tape, and I'm gonna start the floral tape five millimeters from the end of the wire. So I'm gonna take my thumb and finger here, and then, so I'm gonna hold my thumb and first finger. So from there to the tip of the wire is five millimeters, all right, which is, which is here, which is, uh, Basically, you can use like a half an inch, or it's actually three eighths of an inch, a little bit smaller than half, quarter of an inch. So, but anyway, so 10 millimeters from here to here, or five millimeters from here to here, all right? And then once you've done that, so five millimeters, which is three sixteenths of an inch, we're going to then just take your floral tape, gonna go around and just gonna come down here, like so, with the quarter width tape. So just gonna tape down to the bottom of the wire, here like so. So these are five millimeters long, these little wires. And then generally I just use my fingernail just to open them out. And you want these like at a slight angle. Now this is the same way when I show like on my Gerber Daisy, uh, very much how I do the Gerber Daisy center. Now the important thing is here is to make sure that this is smaller than the actual cavity. So you see that when we put the wires in there, they're not gonna poke through the other side. So if you do have any wires that are a little bit longer or if you measure the little bit, you can just take a pair of wire cutters and you can just sort of snip the end of the wire but just make sure that that, as I said, fits into that cavity. But as I said, these are five millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch long. All right, so that's how we would make the large berries. And then we're going to measure off your paste. So your paste is going to be number six ball of paste, same color as the conifer. We will be dusting these a little bit of a different color, but we're gonna use a number six size. So this will be just a regular number six, so one third below, two thirds above. 
And then what we're going to do then is going to make that and roll it into a sausage and press into the triple barrel berry cavity. tea. All right, and you can put a little bit of, if your paste is sticky, you can put a little bit of paste in here, but usually on the berries, it's not usually necessary. All right, but you're going to make this into a little sausage. And of course, also with sugar pea, you can put a little touch of corn flour, corn starch on your little sausage as well as another alternative. But uh, generally, as I said, this goes in. So you put this in as, as a sausage vertically and you're just going to press that into the mold. All right, and then I'm going to press this in with my cosmetic sponge because that's going to push it into the detail. And then you're going to re-mold it on the top there coming back. So you're going to get this slight little bit of like a sort of cupcake look, a little tiny bit domed there like so. All right, um, and then we're going to then, once we've done that, so you're going to have a slight dome, brush glue on the three wires and press into the cavity. So then we're going to take your glue here, I'm going to brush this onto the three wires, one, two, three. I'm going to keep that in your washcloth. And then you're going to just push that in. So you see the three wires will go into there like so. You push those down a little bit. And you're just going to just pinch that around the, with your fingers, just almost like flex the mold. So just going to use the mold, just flex that around. And that's just going to secure the wires. And just make sure that the paste stays within the perimeter of the mold. So where you have that almost like trefoil shape, you have that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is going to then, uh, going to just flex the mold and then just going to take that. And this is going to give you, your, and you see how you're going to have the little star, but this is also be designed as it would be in real life. So they're not all on the top, all right? So you've got one here, one's on the side there, one's on the side there. So this just gives very nice natural looks to there. Now you can, if you want to, all right, you can, for example, take a pair of uh, fine scissors. These are like spring action scissors, and you can actually cut into each of those little stars, which I've done here. Uh, on the top, which really what that does, it's just going to just sort of like almost like separate them like a little calyx. But usually I would just use it straight from the mold, all right? But as I said, that is an optional step you can uh, do onto those. So, anyway, so you're going to put those uh, put those to one side. So that's the that's the little triple the triple berry mold, all right? So that's the little triple berry mold. And then we're going to now add the do the single berry. So for the single berry, we're going to take the same wire using quarter width floral tape. We're going to make a floral tape bud. Uh, so we're going to go four times hook times four. So we're going to use your quarter width floral tape. All right, it's so going to go one, two, three, four. Make a little hook. One, two, three, four. So just like I did on the technique I used on the pine cones and the larch cones on video number one. So you're going to make this little tiny, um, just like a little Q-tip cotton bud there. And then we're going to take, so here we're then going to press a number five into the single berry and pretty much do the same basic technique of molding that around. So this is a number five size ball of paste. All right, and this is going to be used for the single berry. Which these are a little bit bigger. All right, and so you're just going to take your sausage shape, you're going to put that into the mold. All right, so once you put the paste into the mold, you can just sort of press that in with your cosmetic sponge. All right, and then once we've done that, we're going to then press into the, on this one, we're going to use the ball of our companion tool. All right, so you're just going to make a cavity. It's very much like when we do like the hydrangeas and things like that. You're going to make a little hollow there. And then we're going to put a little bit of glue onto the floral tape bud. This is going to be inserted. And you're just going to mold that around the bottom there like so. And again, just going to flex the mold and out comes your berry. So you're going to have your little berry, which is going to have the little star on the top of it. Okay. Now these could also be used for berries like blueberries. So if you did this in a blue with black color, you could make blueberries out of this. You can do lots of different, and you can also use these in the autumn time. So if you made these, let's say in orange or in burgundy colors, um, in red, you could then you put brown on the tip there. You could paint the tip brown, um, or you could use a little bit of black on there. So, but as I said, so it's a fun berry. You could do this in lime green. You could do it in purple as an accent berry. So just a bit like my triple uh, a berry for my uh, holly berries. It's used in a very similar way. Um, and as I said, so that's a sort of a fun way to make the berries. So we've now got the berries made. So I've made some obviously clusters. I've got some triple clusters and some single berries made are ready for assembly. We've got our conifer. So then once that's all dried, uh, we'll be ready for assembly and coloring.
So if we're putting the cedar cypress together, um, as I said, these are all part of the conifer family. Um, so we're gonna you can put these in clusters. So this is the single um, large, extra large leaf I had on the 26 gauge wire. So I've just taped the berries to that. Uh, this one I've done just a sort of a group in and not too, too symmetrical. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a more symmetrical arrangement. So if you were to say doing this behind an orchid or a sort of flower and you want a little bit more of a formal look to it. So what we do, first of all, you would take, once everything's dry, you're gonna take some quarter width floral tape and you're literally just gonna just tape on the bottom and then slide the brown tape up, the quarter width brown tape. Now an alternative is you can buy a lighter brown, all right, so you can get like a pale, almost like a caramel color tape. It's not sort of something you're gonna find everywhere, but you can find those online. And another option is you could also do this with white floral tape, and then you could dust this like I've shown on some of my other uh, projects in Flower Pro. So white quarter width tape, and then you would then just dust the stems a paler chocolate brown, because they have a brown on them. I'm just using a sort of a standard brown, but as I said, you could change this up. Um, then you're going to then just do the small one as well. Okay, so you just will tape your components. So this one I'm gonna do a little bit more formal, a little bit like think of how a fern grows. So we have one of the small and then two of the medium. We have two of the large and we have two of the extra large. So when it goes together, it's gonna to create more of a sort of a tree shape. So this is a little bit more formal and then this is a little bit more informal where you just have random, um, as I said, uh, things you want to do. Now we're gonna start taping with the quarter uh, width tape, all right? And then we're going to take your, so here we're gonna use our tweezers and I'm gonna bend one to the right, one to the left. So a little bit like how we would do ferns. And then we're just gonna just tape those to the, to here, like so. All right, so they're just gonna go, just put those in where they sort of look, look good. I'm gonna just tape this down to little ways. And then we're just gonna come down a little bit further and then we'll put in our large leaves. Of course you can spread these out more as well, but it's just giving you ideas of how to put them together. So you're gonna put them pretty close to this stem, okay? And then at this point here, what we will do is we'll add a 22 gauge wire, okay? Because that's gonna give strength to the main stem, okay? So they, once you get your small, medium, and any of the small, medium, and large in, then you'd add a 22 gauge wire. And then I'm just gonna start that off with some quarter width tape. And then I'm gonna break off my quarter width tape, and then I'm going to finish that off with some half width. So I'm going to take some half width brown, or of course, if you're gonna do white, you just would use the white tape and then you're going to put in the these ones here. So remember these ones are on 28 gauge wire which are gonna be the same as all the other leaves. And remember this one is the single one. So if you're gonna use these as little groups of uh, just the single um, uh, leaves, you can use the 26 gauge wire. And then you can of course, when you're doing this as well, so I'm just gonna show you first of all, like if you were gonna do it without the berries, all right? So if you're gonna do it like for example for let's say you wanted to use this behind an orchid or something like that, that would look really beautiful with like say a cymbidium orchid there. But then the other thing you can do when you're doing this, you can of course add little groups of berries as you go. So I'm gonna put in, so remember the small berries, the single berries are, um, the single berries are a little bit larger. These are the little triple berries. So these are a little smaller. So they would normally go in first. So you're gonna put them in at an angle like this. And I'm gonna just tape that so I'm gonna have that just sort of taped up sort of where you have a little cluster, okay? So the berries are optional, you know, because of course, if you went into your garden and you picked some of your, like Lelandii, which is a very popular conifer globally, a lot of people use that in landscaping in gardens, but they have the little green berries on them. And then of course, then you could add your, you can add your larger leaves onto here. And then when you put in your larger leaves, you can put in your larger leaves here. And then you can add in your, here these are the single berries. So you can put these in. It's the one I just made, so that's a little bit soft. All right, so you're just gonna put these in. 
and then you can you could even add so i've just put in like three and three but you could do of course like three and two all right and then you can just sort of add your your conifer here conifer berries there like that just going to go around it's going to tape down of course in real life they have quite a thick stem so you're just taping the natural leaves onto there so this will give you your conifer so you see how you've got sort of like a a more natural as i said this is a little bit more um, symmetrical this is a little bit more informal more natural looking and then you've also got little single clusters here and of course you know you could also do like a large spray of this as well so you could have like a large spray um, of this so next step is going to be coloring of this um, so when i come back i'm going to show you how i usually color this and finish it off so when we look at the cedar colors, you know, they vary a lot. Some of them are darker green, you know, some of them are more yellowy color. You see yellow with green. When we think of like the landii, which as I said is a popular, obviously cypress conifer that we uh, grow a lot in gardens, that's more of a yellowy green color, but you've got quite a few different, you see it's more of like an apple green. So it does vary quite a lot. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna show you like, just like three variations on little on color. So I'm gonna start off with just this small one and I've partially dusted that. So I'm gonna use like a forest green. So forest green is a slightly bluey green color. So I'm gonna use that. I'm just gonna brush just gently from the outside to the inside, mostly pulling that color around the edge. So you see you're leaving the middle, the natural color. So I'm just gonna just do this brush from the outside to the inside. And then we're also gonna dust a little bit of that onto the berries as well. And then I'm going to just finish off the top of those berries with a little bit of chocolate brown. So I'm just going to take a little bit of chocolate and just going to just sort of dust that on the top of the darker green there. And you can also put just a little bit of brown just at the very base of the, the stem where that meets. All right, and that will be ready to be steamed. Okay, so it's going to give you the sort of the browny green color. Um, the next one I'm going to show you, I'm going to do with a um, yellow, so this is going to be more like Leandii, which is going to have that sort of more of that brighter green color. So here I'm going to use, like this is a daffodil yellow, so just like a bright lemon yellow color. Okay, so with this, I'm going to brush this into the middle of the, the leaves. So you're just going to brush this. I'm using a small flat brush here. I'm going to do the same on the back here as well. So you're just going to get this sort of lemony yellow in the middle of the leaf. And then we're going to then use a apple green color. So just an apple green color here. And see then this, this I'm gonna brush like I did the forest green on the first one. So you get this almost like this two-tone color here onto there. All right, so I'm gonna get this sort of brighter, brighter green onto there. And then you'll use the same colors um, on the berries so i'm just going to have a little bit of the yellowy green color yellowy color and then a little bit of the green all over the berry and then what you can also do here is you can take a little bit of chocolate and then you can mix that with a little bit of vodka so here we've got so just a sort of a pale chocolatey brown, but you can also use gel color here. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to paint that on to where the little five stars are. So you'll actually paint those little, like almost those little stars on the top there. Now this is a nail brush uh, used for nail art. And this is really good for like when you're doing sometimes little tiny detailed pieces on, um, on uh, berries and things like that. Okay, and so you're gonna get a little bit of, uh, and I've also just got just a little touch of brownie color just on there as well. So just a little bit of brown once that's dried. Just to get this sort of this, this lightish color onto the berries, okay? And then we're going to, last one I'm gonna show you, but the nail art brushes are really fine and have short bristles. They're very inexpensive and they work really, really well. And on this one here, I'm going to use, so I'm gonna just take a little bit of my my brown, I'm gonna put this like on un the underneath of the berries. So this is the little bit more formal one here. And then here I'm going to actually use, just 
going to change out to another napkin as well. Because when you're doing this, you can use a napkin and pour the color back into the container. And then this is a moss green color. So this is going to be a more of a mossy green color here. So again, just going to go around your edge a little bit. I'm going to do almost like a sort of a moss green stripe. So I'm just going to do that using the brush flat. And again, I'm just going to use my moss green going around your edge. So you're going to get a little bit like we did before, and then you're going to put a little bit of moss green onto the berries as well. And then with a little bit of chocolate, you can put just a little bit of chocolate at the base of the, again, you can put the chocolate, you don't have to make this like the bark effect, but you can put just a little bit of the chocolate brown at the bottom of the leaves. So those will give you your, as I said, some different color combinations. So that just shows you some various color combinations we have here. Just going to get rid of here. And then we're going to now, we're going to just steam these. And of course, when we steam them, it's going to bring the colors will become a little bit more intensified. Again, with air drying clay, you just would uh, spray those with your unscented hairspray. But you see the sort of the more the yellowy color more of a mid green and then also more of a dark, darker bluey green color. And uh, the conifers, you know, like the cypress and things, they're not real shiny. So we're just going to just give those a little steam. And normally when you're steaming these, you would then put them into like a styrofoam block, but you see how that's going to, just going to intensify the, then you see the yellow colored one there. So you'll have a sort of yellowy color and then we'll have just the regular like mossy green color here like so. So this gives you your, but usually you would just stand these up. So this gives you your almost like three different color variations on your, um, as I said, your conifer, cypress, your lilandii, different varieties and colors. So coming up next, I'm going to be showing you how we do the, um, the bay laurel. All right. So this is the laurel, which is obviously bay leaves come from. And again, there are many varieties of laurel and mountain laurel and different other ones. So I'm gonna show you that next to finish up this video number two. Now we're gonna move on to the second part of this video where I'm gonna show you how to do the bay laurel. Now that is gonna be made um, in the cavity here. So these are gonna be the bay leaves, laurel leaves. And of course, uh, this is used, some varieties of this obviously can be used for culinary. And uh, this shows obviously bay laurel, um, which obviously is where bay leaves come from. We're using culinary for stews and gravies and things. And of course, this also shows here the sort of natural progression of the color of the leaves. You know, in springtime, they have blossoms. In the summertime, those obviously would turn into little like buds. And then obviously they turn into in the winter time, the fall winter time, they turn into these berries. So this could also be used, this uh, leaf, for example, for olive leaves. So if you're making olives, they're very, very similar to make obviously black olives or green olives just would be left in a green color. But this leaf can also be used for, for example, basil, which is obviously a culinary herb, but basil leaves could be made with this, but it also could be used for other leaves also, things like gardenias and many, many other types of leaves, all right? So again, the very versatile mold in that we can use this for many different applications. So we're going to take the, um, mold here. So in your directions. So, so first of all, paste color, I have here like almost like a lime zest color. So in your directions, it says you're going to use like a lime skin green. So like a lime green color. So all I've done is I've added some yellow to my, um, to my sort of foliage green base. So this is the same color I use for the conifer, but this is more yellow. So a little bit more limey in color. Okay. And again, so in air drying clay, you could just make that color up and then just add some yellow to make it brighter. Now we're going to measure off a number six and a number seven small. So we're gonna use, we've got two leaf size, so number six regular size and number seven that goes through the hole. All right, so those are our two leaf sizes. We're gonna brush some vegetable fat shortening onto the cavities here. You know, so this one little mold is going to give you lots, a bit like, you know, like obviously the wedding foliage mold, my ultimate filler flower mold. It's a lot of different things you can make with this uh, and elements of this, not only for what the mold was designed for, but for many other applications as well. 
Um, so we're going to put a little bit of vegetable fat into here. So we're going to roll the piece into a sausage with a pointed end, about three quarters the length of the cavity. So we're just going to condition this, just going to then just roll that into a sausage shape with a slightly pointed end, obviously to match, and it wants to be about three quarters of the length of the piece here. We're going to press this in, so I'm just going to press that into the center, and then I'm going to use, so I'm going to press this to the edges. So this is where I'm using my cosmetic wedge, you know, so cosmetic wedge is good for certain shapes. And uh, so what it means is it's going to be a little thinner around the edge and a little thicker in the middle. And then we're going to create the ridge. Now you can either do this, and again, I've shown this several times before in other videos. You can either use your fingers for this, all right? So you see how you're using your fingers. So it needs to go about halfway up. So you're creating this slight ridge back um, here. Alternatively, you can also do that with your companion tool. So you can just roll with your companion tool to create the little ridge that runs up the back of this, all right? But anyway, so then you're going to take your wire. So this is a 26 gauge wire here. You can use white or green. I'm showing you white, it's a little bit easier to see. So this is going to go into the channel, and this is going to go in about halfway into the leaf, all right? So it just wants to go in about halfway into the leaf. Now again, if you're using these for um, craft application, or for example, on cookies, cupcakes, whatever, where you're not going to see the back of them, of course, you can just take them out of the mold, soften the edge and leave them as is. This is pretty much straight from the mold without the back on them. But I'm um, gonna use, again, show you another technique. All right, so this is your, um, obviously, multi-leaf veiner. So you've got concave, convex shape, all right? This is the side we normally would put the rose leaf in. And we, of course, bring this over, press on the top. We're only gonna use the right-hand side of this. And um, so then we're going to, uh, take the right hand side of the multi-leaf vena, brush with a little vegetable fat shortening. So I'm actually gonna put just a little tiny bit of vegetable fat shortening onto this. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on. Now, because this is almost cup shape, all right, the way I found easiest to do this is you position this, or put this onto the mold. So you put this like at the tip of the, and again, you'll see how the, the wire is coming out of that bottom part there, like those so, but just sort of make sure that you get that pretty much as I said, lined up with the top like that. And then what I found works really well is I'm gonna take a um, 35 millimeter or one and a half inch styrene ball, right? So this is a polystyrene styrene ball. So this is about number 15 on the size guide, all right? But I said, this is a 35 millimeter foam craft ball, um, one and a half inches. You can also take a piece of aluminum foil as well. So just take some foil sheets. And again, you just would make that to about a number 15 size, all right? Because this is inside, it's not flat. So what I found works really well with this is I'm just gonna roll back and forward with my with my little ball here, all right? And that's going to then vein the back of the leaf, all right? Now, if, if it's a little bit, just because I was obviously um, had the foam on top of it, but if you need to press a little bit harder on the top there, you can also re, re vein that up and you can see how it's gonna give you a nice veining onto the leaf, all right? And um, so you can just extend that central vein just along just a little bit because obviously this is a different type of veiner, but that's going to give you your beautiful veining onto the back. You're going to flex your mold. You're going to take this out. Okay, we're just going to mold around the bottom here. Then we're going to take your little mini pad. I'm going to use my mini pad. Alternatively, like with air drying clay, you can also do this on your uh, finger as well, but you're just going to soften on the back of the leaf. So we're just going to use the shaft here, it's going to just soften around the back here, so you won't lose the veining from the nice veining on here. And then you're going to turn it over to the front side and we're just going to hollow the base here. All right, so we're going to then hollow the base around a needle tool and pinch it to a slight taco shape. So we're just going to pinch it a little bit like a Mexican taco shape, so a slight V shape. And then this is going to dry in your convoluted foam. So again, this is just going to sort of dry in your convoluted foam like this. This is how the leaves dry, all right? So I'm gonna show you the large one. So you can just sort of see the concept again. All right, so we've already got the vegetable fat shortening into here. So it's gonna roll this into, so roll it into a sausage. It wants to be about three quarters of the length of the cavity, right, with a slightly pointed end. You'll just, you just be a little bit easier for you to see the, and just gonna press it onto the top here like so, and then you're just gonna press that down. So it's gonna sort of fill that middle part of the mold, all right? And then you see then what I'm gonna do is I'm just working your 
with your cosmetic sponge or wedge, working this to the edge of the cavity. All right, here. Now, if you have a little bit um, much, and also as I've often said with my, uh, when I'm doing my, um, obviously, uh, Flower Pro, like you can, of course, you can um, work with smaller amounts of paste, but if you do have a little tiny bit of excess, you can, of course, just trim that off, all right? Because a lot of times when I'm teaching, especially a beginner, you know, it's easier for them to work with a paste a little bit thicker and you can refine this, this down, okay? So we're gonna take that, um, so now we're going to then do the same here for the large one. So we're gonna then, again, just gonna pinch this with your finger. So you're gonna get this little ridge down there, but especially with smaller leaves, like on some of my videos when I'm doing smaller leaves, I usually use the companion tool for a smaller size leaf. And then we're gonna take your glue here, so a little bit of glue, it's gonna go onto the wire. I'm going to insert this into the paste here. It's going to go into about halfway into the leaf. All right, and then you're going to take the, so you're going to take the right hand side, all right? So this is going to go onto there. So you're just going to just line that up with the tip. All right, and you should be able to then just sort of where the wire is here. And as I said, then you're just going to use your ball there so you're just gonna go back and forward with the little foam ball or the foil ball, sorry. And this with a foil one, that would be how you would do that. All right, and that's gonna give you a leaf. And then just um, again, remember if your vein is not right in the middle, you can just obviously re-vein uh, re that. And then you're just gonna have to extend the length because the, the leaf is a lot is shorter than the leaf we have here. So just extend that, that line at the top there with your companion tool, just so your lateral vein will follow on. All right, you're gonna take this out of the out of the mold. And then we're gonna take this, and then with your, as I said, on the edge of your leaf here, we're just gonna use your companion tool. So when I do this technique, like on rose leaves, I'm using the tool at an angle, okay? Because also remember with air drying clay as well, you can't use a balling tool. Like we traditionally in flower making, we use a ball tool like this, but it's gonna erase all the veining off of it. So I am used now the companion tool a lot. So that's done on the back side. And then the front of the leaf, we're gonna hollow that. I'm gonna pinch it like a taco shape. But as you can see, these almost look just like fresh basil leaves. So, you know, if you're doing a cake with a culinary sort of theme to it, because I often use like herbs like basil and rosemary, and uh, you know, you're doing a garden themed cake, you have a kitchen garden. So those are very sort of uh, fun to use. Like when, for example, we could also use these for citrus leaves like lemon and orange leaves as well. So really, as I said, a very versatile leaf cavity. So these are gonna dry. Um, when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we make the berries. And the berries are optional. Of course, if you're doing basil, you could do little basil flowers. When you do, um, for example, a little bit like when we do in uh, the lavender or the rosemary, you could also, of course, do uh, rosemary flowers as well. So that really, as I said, but we're gonna just let these dry and I'm gonna show you how we do the berries. So for the uh, laurel, uh, bay laurel, uh, berries, we're going to be using same technique we used uh, with the uh, molds for the conifer, but we're going to be using the holly berry mold. Now in my uh, NL collection by Kitties who design holly berry, obviously this is the large triple holly, this is the large berry. So that's a comparable size as you can see. But the difference is this just has a little small dot in the top of it. Now, if you didn't have this, of course, you could use your uh, winter foliage mold and then, of course, make the same as we did conifer berries. But we do these in the same color um, as the uh, leaves of the laurel, okay? So we're using that same color. Now, we're going to repeat exactly the same technique, all right, that I showed in the first part of this video with the, with the uh, conifer in that I have three 28 gauge wires and I've just taped five millimeters from the end of the wire and then open this up. And uh, so that is gonna be done with a number six uh, size ball of paste. So we're going to take your paste, gonna make it into a little sausage. And again, if your paste is sticky, you can put a little bit of vegetable shortening into there. It just depends a little bit on your paste. Because also with when you're doing craft as well, when you're working with air drying clay, when it's fresh, it can, uh, as I said, uh, be a little bit sticky. So you can also leave it for a couple of minutes to uh, dry a little bit. Just press that on the top and then just re-mold that. So you're gonna get like a little bit of a 
more of a sort of like a cupcake, slightly rounded back to that, okay? And then we're gonna take your glue. So with your glue, you're gonna put a little bit of egg white onto the glue onto there, glue or egg white. And then you're gonna put this into the cavity. You're gonna just flex that around the mold. Flex that around the wire here, just like so. Again, just make sure that your paste doesn't come past that trefoil shape. And this is gonna come out of the mold here, like so, just to give you your triple berries. And they have just like a little tiny, almost like a little slight mound on the top of them. So that would be your, uh, and then to be the small triple berries. And then for the single berry, we're gonna be using in your directions uh, in the book. So then we're gonna take a single berry, gonna use the same wire, quarter width floral tape, three times hook times three. So just like I showed you, three times hook times three. And this is gonna be the single berry, which is going to be at number five. Now these would be in the early autumn fall time, okay? Because these mature and ripen during the winter time into making almost like a sort of a black or a green colored. So it looked a little bit like an olive. Okay, and again, just gonna push this in and we're gonna use that same technique that we used before where we're gonna insert the companion tool into there. We're gonna put a little bit of glue onto that floral tape bud. I'm gonna just push this in and you're gonna mold this around because the, the actual berries, the winter berries I'm gonna show you next are a little bit more elongated shape. All right, so just gonna just mold that off there like so. I'm just gonna just mold that around. So you're gonna just gonna get that a little bit more of a slightly oval, like a little bit like an oval shape, all right? So a little bit like more like an acorn shape, okay? So that would be your, as I said, your um, larger, larger berry. And then we're going to take your um, winter berries. We're using a 26 gauge wire, okay? So this is a 26 gauge wire. So we're gonna use, uh, go around five times, hook then five more times, okay? So we're gonna use the quarter width tape here. So one, two, three, four, five, hook. One, two, three, four, five come down the wire. I'm just using quarter length wires here. And then when we do these, we're just gonna do these free hands. So we're gonna use number six, regular size, and number seven, small. And you're gonna mold into an oval shape and then let dry. So we're gonna take your glue here. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue onto there. I'm gonna just insert this in. But this would also be the way you could make olives as well. So when you make olives, you could do these. Again, these would be fun. You could do like basil leaves and olive leaves, you know, for somebody that's Italian or likes to cook Italian food. So you see how you're just gonna make those into an oval shape. And that's, that's all they're, 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 the berries are like, right? They're just very, very simple shape like an olive would be. And of course you could do these in green and then you can do, the, then they're gonna be, have black on them. And then, cause you can see here on the laurel, here is the laurel leaves there, but you can see what we've made there would be like the little green berries. And then you see how when they're ripe in the winter time, they're gonna be green with just like a black top on them. But so if you're making olives, you could just leave them green or you could use them um, uh, the black color on the top of those. And then we're gonna do, this is gonna be a number seven small size. So again, gonna put just a little bit of glue onto this and mold this around the bottom here, like so. Just to include, and then just gonna make that into a, like as I said, into a, an oval sort of shape. All right, so a little bit like a, a bean shape or like an acorn shape here, like so. All right, and that will be your, your winter berries, okay? So you've got your winter berries and you have your, um, like obviously in, in the larger ones and then you've got your smaller ones done in the mold. So when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we do the coloring and then how we move on to assembly. So for the laurel leaves, we're going to tape these with half width green floral tape. So we're going to just uh, start taping here and then going to slide the tape up to the bottom of the leaf and come down about two and a half centimeters, about an inch down the stem. And I'm gonna show you two different colors. I'm gonna show you more of a sort of winter color with the bigger berries. So for those, we're gonna be doing a darker, darker coloring onto these. And um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use some moss green color. 
And then with the, I'm using a, an angled brush here. What I want to do is I'm going to cut. So I'm actually going to leave this, almost this sort of natural colored stripe on the leaves, okay? Because they have this, so um, you're going to just use your flat brush and you're going to just use your, like you literally like if you were painting, like how you'd fill in and you're going to fill that in and then you're going to do the other side of the leaf here. You're going to cut in, but see I'm leaving the, the center of the leaf, the natural green. And we're going to just brush over the surface of that. So you have this sort of green stripe down the middle. And then we're going to do a green stripe on the back. So we're just going to come down the lateral vein just with the green like this. And of course, just to show you, you know, so if you were doing this like a, you could then of course put this back into the container. So when you finish with your coloring and then you can change out to another napkin, all right? And then that way you don't waste any. And then we're going to use some forest green, which is the darker green used on some of the other projects like on the conifer. I'm just gonna brush just from the outside to the inside. So you're gonna get just this slightly darker green just on your very edge, okay? And when we steam this, it's gonna have obviously this nice natural look. Now on the uh, berries. So when we do the the berries, we're going to use this will be on the um, larger berries on like the egg shaped berries, the oval shaped ones. We're going to use a little bit of the moss green. It's going to come up about a third of the way up the bottom. Okay, and we got this slightly darker green. And then we're going to use some black dust. So this is a black dusting powder, charcoal color. And then we're going to take your, so what we're actually going to do here is we're going to brush, see the black on the top, and this is going to make the sort of the berry, the natural colored berry for the laurel. So, so you're going to just brush from the top and come down. And when you do the larger, the number seven small size ones, those are going to be, you're going to bring the black about three quarters, about two thirds of the way down. So going to come down to really to almost like meet where the green is there. So just almost work that black in and on the tip there, just going to put a little bit of the, the black. So we're going to have that. And then when you do the, these ones here, you're just going to come in about halfway down. All right. So when you do the smaller, the two smaller berries, however many you're making, you just bring the black about halfway down. So you're going to come about two thirds of the way down and then about a, a halfway down on the smaller, the smaller ones. Okay. So that will be the coloring onto those. And then on the, the other leaves I'm going to show you, we're going to do here. I've already taped those. What I'm going to do is just going to use a, this is an apple green color here. So it's going to use like an apple green. Again, I'm just going to just brush this around the edge. So this would be very similar to like if you're doing basil because basil is quite a bright, you know, green leaf and then a green stripe down the back. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of using here a Harrison's yellow, which is a sort of golden yellow. You can also use like lemon with a little bit of uh, orange added to it. And you're going to just going to dust a stripe down the front there. So this is going to have this almost sort of yellowy orange stripe down there. And then on the berries here, just going to make these. So you're just going to go all over those with the green. So you're just going to go all over with the apple green color. And this will be the one that is a little bit slightly longer done in the mold. All right. So pretty um, simple coloring onto those. And um, so next I'm going to um, going to show you how we steam these and finish them off. So here are the laurel leaves. So what I've done is put them into a uh, block of styrofoam, foam block. I've got this covered with plastic wrap, which is what I normally use for my students. And um, so now if this was air drying clay, you would just do the same and then you would spray them with unscented hairspray. So that's going to set the dust. All right, in sugar, what we're going to do is we're going to steam them. So we're just going to just steam the leaves. So just once the steam starts coming out, it's just, it's easier when you're doing a group of leaves like this, just to sort of be able to just steam the backs of them as well. 
okay? And then the berries, which I have on a separate block, you're going to steam the berries as well. Again, for air drying clay, this would just be hairspray. So you just would use a little bit of hairspray on the berries. So that will set them. So steam for sugar, hairspray for air drying clay. Now then, um, because the berries, these berries are shiny, think of a little bit like blackberries, they're quite shiny. So what we're gonna do is we will use on those, we're gonna use a full strength glaze, all right? This was leaf glaze I used for the, uh, for when I did in episode one, when I showed the large, the hemlock leaves, all right? But uh, this is half strength glaze or leaf glaze. And then this is full strength glaze. So in uh, craft, all right, you can either use like the Sculpey do a, do a, um, a, a, a basically like a high shine uh, gloss uh, glaze. So you could do that or you could use clear nail polish, all right? So in craft, you could actually brush these with clear nail polish. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the, the glaze here. This is gonna be done because the reason why we're not assembling this first is the berries are really shiny like holly and then the leaves are not quite as shiny. So you're gonna just use your glaze. You're gonna go over these berries so this will make them shiny. And then gonna go over the top here. And then you just wanna put these to one side just to sort of dry a little bit. Sometimes these fine wires will bend a little bit. You can also, of course, use straws as well, which I use on a lot of my, my projects. And then I'm going to put the black onto here. It's gonna put, so what I'm doing there is I'm brushing from the bottom, I'm coming up. So you see how you're gonna get. So this looks like a black olive. So remember when you do this technique, you brush in just in one direction the reason why we come from the bottom to the top is that if we did it the other way around, and then you can just brush your brush onto a napkin, because what will happen is if you did it the other way around, then if you go from the black down, you're gonna drag the black dust down. Now, the reason why we have steamed this is the steam sets the powder, just like the hairspray acts like a fixative, and then that's going to give you these berries. But I so said, these look very much like a black olive almost, so you could use this technique for olives, and then that leaf could be used for olives. You can also do olive leaves with my wedding foliage. You can use the Italian ruscus um, leaves, because some olive leaves are narrow um, leaves, you know, they vary quite a lot in different olives. So, um, but this is just gonna be brushed up onto the top. You see, and then those leaves need to just dry, the berries need to dry for a few minutes, all right? So you see how you have your nice berries? and uh, they're gonna just dry for a few minutes and we'll assemble those. And then just gonna clean your brush off so we don't contaminate your glaze. I'm gonna put this back into your, remember confectioner's glaze is not water soluble, so you need to use like a brush cleaner, but also you can get little containers with lids on them, so they obviously mean you don't have to obviously use a brush. The other alternative is you can buy very inexpensive brushes like from the dollar or pound store and then you can just throw those away. Now these uh, leaves, all right, so these leaves, We've got two options there. We could brush those with leaf glaze, all right? So this is a diluted version of the confectioner's glaze. It means the confectioner's glaze is gonna make them more shiny. Uh, this is gonna give you more of a sort of natural look. Or you could use, like in craft, you could use your obviously like Sculpey satin glaze. Um, or alternatively, we can use the spray lacquer, which I've shown in a lot of my uh, classes before and demonstrations. But this spray glaze is obviously a spray version of like leaf glaze. Now I'm gonna just take these outside and do them outside or do them into a box or a, like a trash can, a garbage can, because a rubbish bin, because you uh, don't want to sort of do this on a work surface. Um, so I'm gonna just take, cause I've got quite a few leaves here, I'm just gonna hold the block and I'm just gonna just gently spray um, over the leaves to give them a shine. So when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we put this together. So the leaves and berries are now dry, so I'm just gonna tape them. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna start off with my Floral tape is going to come down just a little ways. I'm going to take my next leaf. I'm just going to just bend that out at a slight angle. So just literally about five millimeters, about three eighths of an inch showing of the stem. And then I'm going to put in my little single berries at the top here. I'm just going to just take my little 
very, just going to bend those, kind of take those in. Going to come down just a little ways and then I'm going to put in my other leaf. So I'm just going to stagger my leaf a little bit. And this leaf will just come, it just come out a little bit like that. It's a little bit like how holly grows, all right? So laurel is you know, quite similar to holly. In the, and then you're just going to take in the, you know, your little small berry. So I think of just a little bit like how you would do. Then I'm just going to add a 22 gauge wire. So I'm just going to add a 22 gauge wire where the stem, when they, you put the final amount of berries in there. And of course you could have different combinations. I've just done one of the little berries and then obviously the three. This just gives you your laurel, okay? Your uh, bay leaves laurel. And then when we do the larger grouping, okay, we're going to do the larger grouping. So I've got here the leaves here. So just leave the, you can leave these to dry. I mean, obviously they, they'll dry off um, while you're working with them. So again, we're just going to just start off with the first leaf. Just going to take down here. And then I'm going to just take the, going to stagger these leaves. So these will kind of come to the side here. So I'm going to do pretty much the same as I've just, just shown you, but I'm just using the small leaves at the end here. So these are going to be the and those leaves will just come out. And on this one, I'm going to now take my uh, berries. So I'm going to use the two, I'm going to use two smaller berries. So I'm going to take two of the smaller berries here. Again, just going to, just going to bend these out. And then these little berries will just sort of sit here. Glaze takes a little time to dry, so just uh, make sure you've got that sort of it is dry before you put them together, because if they're still sticky, they potentially could stick together, okay? But you see how you're going to get these, these berries here? Then we're just going to come down just a little ways, and then I'm going to put in my three leaves here. I'm going to just sort of, again, just sort of stagger those. Because also the way you put these together would be dependent on where you're going to use them in a spray. Um, a lot of times when I'm using these elements I'm showing you on this video, I would use them in a sort of a spray where you maybe would have a poinsettia and then you'll have like all of these different evergreens and uh, winter foliage coming from that. So of course you can, uh, but you can also make this more dimensional as well. If you wanted to make it more dimensional, you could have it like this, one, two, three, like this. But we're going to put in the going to put in the leaves and again at that intersection there so you see how this makes it a little bit more sort of dimensional then all right so if you're going to see it from above you know you do it like that but you could have it a little bit more sort of flat like this all right and then we're going to put in your so here we've got a 22 gauge wire so I'm just going to put that in Again, remember the length of these wires will be dependent really how you're going to use them and if you ever come to put flowers together um, in air drying clay or in sugar and you realize you should have had you should have an extra you can just obviously also build the wire up a little bit I just want to come down just a little way from here and then I'm going to then take in my larger berries so these larger berries will sit here like this you see how it's going to give a really beautiful sort of look and you see so these are really shiny okay which would be like when we do holly, how the holly berries would be. And then you'd have the, and then you'd have the, of course, the holly leaves would just be the normal shine. So that's why we uh, obviously separated these and did them differently. Remember in air drying clay, you just would use like a clear nail polish, or as I said, a high gloss, like the uh, Sculpey product on the uh, berries, and then just the satin finish um, on the, uh, on the leaves. And here you can see you've got the, the berries here. Okay, so you've got these really nice berries. And uh, so this is really fun. And then here you've got sort of like the laurel, but this would be represented of obviously like the autumn time. And then this is more the winter time. So you can see both really nice components to use in a spray. So I hope you've enjoyed this second part of the 
videos of the winter foliage mold and we'll have a lot of fun making those components I've shown you, the sort of uh, uh, cedar and then obviously part of the conifer family and then of course also the laurel, the bay laurel and uh, showing you the different color variations so you get ideas about using them at different times of year. So make sure you join me in my third part which is going to focus on the last two uh, components on the mold which is going to include the yew and also the juniper. So see you soon, sweet wishes, bye!